Happy Heart Farms. We're on the second part of a multi-part video on how to build a greenhouse. The first part was on how to make a hip bender and bend pipe. The second part we're going to show you how to make a uh, hoop to build a greenhouse. What we're doing is we have three quarter inch conduit that's held together as you look. It's held together with one inch coupling which we'll go over how to make and how to do it. And then this, this um, hoop is made with three pieces of three quarter inch conduit. It is 20 feet wide, 10 feet high, and you can string them up as many as you want. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build two 55 foot greenhouses um, out of this conduit. And we're gonna actually not just use them for greenhouses. We're in North Florida, where in the summer it's pretty hot. And uh, our growing season is as much cut into by the summer as it is by the winter. So what we're going to do is we're going to make these in such a way that we can um, put shade cloths on them, maybe June, July, take it off, September, and then uh, throw some um, visqueen or greenhouse covering on them and uh, grow through the winter. With that, we should be pretty close to growing year-round. Okay. The first step of making the hoop is to make the side support. And what we've done is we've taken a 10-foot piece of 3 quarter inch conduit and we bent it slightly uh, just we bent it to about the halfway a little bit short of the halfway point and we um, took a one inch piece of conduit we bent it slightly also so it would would go along the curvature but we didn't bend it quite as much so there would be some tension on help hold it in place and then what we did is we attached it using self tapping screws this one inch piece of conduit uh, that we have on here that we're using as a coupling, we've cut 18 inches. We marked the center of it with a black line and then we marked a black line on our three quarter inch pipe so we knew where to slide it so the coupling would be centered when we joined the pipes together to give equal support. So what I did is I got my 10 foot three quarter inch coupling and I took it to my hip bender and I bent it slightly. I just took it and I bent it just a little bit. You can't even tell it's getting bent. And I just took it and they call it a hip bender because you're using your hip. And I just bent it just a little bit at a time. You move the pipe about six inches. I uh, move that one a little further. My uh, bench here isn't attached, fastened down, so uh, I gotta kind of be careful with it. Sure is a lot easier if you fasten it down. And as you can see, I'm barely bending it, but my pipe is getting some curvature to it. And so this is what I end up with, which is gonna be enough. It, it's not gonna be enough to uh, bring the, the legs in to 20 feet, but what you're going to do is once you have it put together, you're going, to, you're going to squeeze it down to that 20 feet. What I want to do now is take my other leg and just lay it on top of it and see how close I am. And if you look, I'm not quite there. I need to bend it a little bit further down. The other piece is if it's not exact, an exact match but pretty close, you're going to be alright because you're going to bend it down and put some tension on it. So I'm going to bend it just a little bit more. And I tell you what, after three or four tries with this, you'll be like a pro because uh, it's a very simple and qu relatively quick process. This should be pretty close because what we were right missing was was the um, to move it down. As you look, it's it's pretty close down here. I still maybe need to curl it at the end a little bit, or bring it in at the end, but this will do for our purposes because we're going to pull it in for when we attach it. The next step is to bend the top piece. It'll be rounded on both ends. Again, we're using a three-quarter inch uh, piece of um, ten-foot conduit, and what we're going to do is we're going to take it in our hip bender, and we're going to bend it on both sides the same way we did the other process and then we're going to flip it 
and do the same thing. And when we get to that point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one that I've already made. I'm using as a template. I'm using the same template with every single um, part. So my my top arch, I'm using the same template. So we're close on it. On my sides, I'm using the same template because I don't want to switch it up because one's going to be a little bit different than others because you're doing this by hand, and that creates you know some degree of uncertainty. So I'll bend both sides and I'll get a template like so. Now I'm going to show you how to attach the couplings um, and join the parts together. With the coupling, I said this earlier, what we did is we measured 9 inches from the end of the conduit on the curved end of the pipe and we took a sharpie and we made a line. That's the point at which when you slide the coupling on, you'll stop it. And that way, because the coupling is 18 inches long, that will give you the 9 inch mark is about the halfway point. I had my daughter put a nine inch line on the coupling because my 11 year old son was screwing these together and I wanted him to know how far he could go so he didn't put a screw into nothing. So what we do is we slide the conduit in and we put two number eight five eighths inch self tapping machine screws. Two in each side then we flip it over and we put two in the other side. Once we've done that, we then join the pipes together. Okay, I'm going to show you how to join the pipes together. Again, we have our mark at the 9 inch mark. This should be 9 inches of conduit in here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the, the conduit into the coupling. Be careful that you don't slide like this and catch your hand. You want to move your hand back here because it's going to move 9 inches. I slide it in until they hit because that's going to be the spot. If it's off a little bit, I, I think the margin, you can have a pretty good margin of error there. Then I set it down on a flat surface or as close as we can find a flat. And I take myself a machine screw and I start off slowly. You don't want to start off fast, especially on this rounded surface. And I drill it in. I'm having a little problem here, which is to be expected. And then you get it in. The big thing, the problem you're gonna, the problem you're gonna run into a self-tapping screw, especially on a rounded surface, they're gonna slip and shoot out. You want to start off drilling real slow, and as you get a little scratch on the surface where it'll hold your screw in place or go into a little, you can speed up. Not that hard of a process once you get the feel for it. But again, for the feel for it can be a little difficult. I showed my 11 year old son how to do this and he did oh, about 30 of them in about an hour and a half. Um, so I've got the one screw in there, I'll, let me put my second screw in. And sometimes they go in without a problem, sometimes they go in with lots of problems. Again I start off slow, ah, and I broke that one right off, no maybe not. But you, you run into some problems, you just go slow. What happened there is I started pushing too hard. I think I did break it off, but I'm going to see if I can still use it. Now, I did break the tip off of that one. Um, but you want to start it going kind of slow. And don't rush it like what I just did, or you'll have problems. And then if you go in, it goes in nice and easy. Now what I'm going to do from this point is I'm going to go around to the other side and do the exact same thing. Once I get the other side put in, I'm going to flip it and do the, do the um, other side of the coupling. So I'm going to come over here. Again, I'm going to slide my coupling in, my conduit into the coupling, but I'm going to be real careful not to put my hand like that. I'm going to put it out here so I don't pinch myself because that would hurt. And sometimes because of the way the pipe's bent, There'll be some pressure there, and you got to push kind of hard, and you don't want to get pushing hard and uh, have that coupling um, grab your hand because you know you can end up with stitches by the time that's all said and done. Go on. So I'm going to put two screws in this side. <coughs> 
And see that that one was moving around on me. So let's see if we can do a little better. Okay, that one went in all right. But again, you really want to be patient with this. Here we go again. Something I've found with self-tapping screws sometimes, the tapping part might be missing. This one's got a small tapping part. I might have just worn it out. Uh, sometimes you run into that, and again, I was going too fast. That could be the problem. Just be patient. And then it goes in nice. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to move my drill, and then I'm just going to take my hoop, and I'm going to flip it. Watch out, Liberty. I'm going to flip it over, and we'll put the screws in on the other side. Hey, thank you guys for watching the video, and stay tuned for our upcoming videos as we progress through the process of building this greenhouse. Very inexpensive way to build a greenhouse. We've also talked about using these hoops to build chicken coops, uh, a lot of other things. I just think, it, I think it's a great way. These uh, 10 foot pieces of 3 quarter inch conduit cost uh, $3 and 60 some odd cents at Home Depot. The uh, 1 inch conduit costs 6 something and we, we use those for the couplings. So I, I'm very excited about the cost of this project. When it's all said and done, we're going to have over 2,000 square feet of greenhouses um, with the ground cover, the we're going to use 2x6 around the bottom, the covering, everything. I think I can do this project for under $1,000. So stay tuned and visit us at www.happyheartfarms.com and like us on Facebook, happyheartfarms.com. You guys have a great day.